Hi guys, welcome back. It's a lovely day in England today. It's lovely and sunny and I'm sitting in my studio and I've been having a play today. Now at Christmas, just gone, I asked for some ink tense pencils because I'd heard that you could use them on fabric and they were permanent and they also blend very well. So I thought I'd have a fiddle while I was in the studio this morning and I've been playing with this sort of thing which has worked really rather well. So this is um, a feather which I have machine embroidered onto white cotton. I've then layered up a piece of wadding behind it and I've quilted it and then I took my ink tense pencils and I've kind of just added colour where I wanted to and then flooded it with water and let them flood out past the feather and I quite like the effect. So I just thought I'd run you through how I actually went about doing this and thought that you know you might like to have a go as well. And really this is quite random what happens. So you know it's uh, it's got a nice effect to it, you can't plan it and it just gives you something quite interesting at the end of it. So what I have in front of me is a piece of low loft wadding um, and I've got two pieces of white cotton and on one piece, because this piece will be my backing fabric in a minute, I'm just going to draw a quick feather and again, love my friction pen. It's really good for those of you that are a little bit nervy about free motion stitching because if you get this wrong, you can then just iron it off and it disappears. So I've just drawn my feather line on there and I'm just going to put in some marks so that I know where my feather is going to be. Now you could prepare a tracing as well and do this with um, a tracing underneath um, if you're feeling that you know you don't feel confident enough to just do what I'm doing. But as I said if I muck this up all I've got to do is take this to an iron and iron it and all my blue lines will disappear and I can start again. So I'm just going to add on some swirly bits here and here and I've got a feather and I'm just going to round that off at the bottom there and put a few bits at the bottom and there we go, I have my feather. Now I can put in some extra details if I wanted to. Um, I could put in, I could start to fill in the middles of my feather sections with all sorts of lovely designs and if this makes it easier for you to follow that's fine but I like to just pop that in like that and I make it up as I'm stitching it so I never quite know how my feathers going to turn out so I've got that like that um, I now need to layer it up so what I need is I need my wadding I need some 505 spray or something similar I'm just going to give that a little bit of a spray I'm going to pop my marked design on top and that's done and then I'm going to turn over and I'm just going to quickly spray that bit on the back and I'm going to put my backing fabric on. So actually what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to stitch it and quilt it all at the same time. So there we go, that is prepared and ready to go to the sewing machine. So I'm just going to set the sewing machine up and I'll be back in a minute. Right, so here I have my layering system. I've not got it in a hoop. I've got it all wadded up and I'm going to start to stitch. I'm going to start at the top up here. And again, you need to get your thread through from the bottom to the top. So I'm just going to do a full turn and there's my thread from the underneath popped through. Get it in my fingers, pop it out to the back and then I'm ready to sew. Remember to engage the machine and put this bit down at the back here and then we're ready. So I'm just going to gently stitch around my design, trying to stay on my blue line that I have drawn there. But if I miss it, I'm not gonna panic. Oops, I've got a thread caught there. Let's just lift that a moment. And then I can clip those threads out because I've started and I don't need them anymore. So, and you can also turn your work around so that you can see where you're going now. So I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to do that feather. And that one. So nice, even movement. And then I'm going to put in some detail inside this 
a leaf here. In fact, I'm actually going to treat it like a leaf because it's that sort of shape. So I'm going to put in the veins. I'm going to put in some swirls. When I get to the end of the swirl, I'm going to go round and round on the spot so that I get like a nice sort of neat sort of bead effect on the end. And I'm going to put in another one there as well. I think it needs another one. Now that was a little bit off road, you see. I didn't have a blue line there, but I felt confident enough to go and put that one in on my own. And this is what this lovely friction pen and the blue line does for you. It gives you confidence to actually do things that you wouldn't normally do. Um, and it gets rid of the sort of blank canvas because if I actually gave you this to do on a blank piece of white cotton it would be really unfair this way you can get a little bit of confidence up and then you can go and you can do some extra stitching as well en route so there you go you can see and as you get more confident you'll get faster missed that blue line completely there but I'm not worried because I will line it off in a moment. Another one of these coming here. I'm going to put a loop on the end of that one and back down to join the middle. I mean all the time you can stay on the mark line that's brilliant that means that you're learning control but if you don't stay on the line don't beat yourself up. Just Try a slightly different movement and make it work for you as you go. I'm going to put the coil on this one here. And there you go. It's quite a fluid action. You can keep going. doing that until you have done the whole thing and you can see I've missed the lines I'm not perfect and actually it's great that I'm not perfect because I'm trying to teach you that it's all right sometimes to not be quite perfect and knowing that you can actually iron all of this off so I'm going to come back in a minute I'm going to finish this and I'm going to iron this so that this all this blue disappears and then I'm going to show you what I did with the ink tennis pencils Okay, so here we have um, the quilted and stitched uh, feather and I've ironed it and you can see that all the blue has disappeared so no one will ever know that I wasn't on the lines but I've got this lovely design now. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick some colours from the Inktense pencils and these work really nicely on the fabric. They're quite smooth, um, you can actually get in quite a lot of colour, you can blend them too um, I'm not going to do that at the moment, I'm just going to use the plain colours and show you what I did this morning. Um, I quite like a bit of this blue in there as well. I don't actually know whether some of these colours are going to do it for me, but yesterday um, and this morning, playing with them, I kind of just like the fact that you just randomly get what you... you um, pop down and they all seem to work. I think it's the fact that they bleed outside the lines and it, it because they bleed outside the lines, which is not normally what you want them to do, it kind of all the colours sort of work. So I'm just popping on and you can see I'm being they come off quite nicely. I could spend more time doing this. You could, you know, keep going and make them stronger and lighter. But I just want to sort of really just get some done so that I can show you what happens. Let's have a bit of lime green. This one's going to be quite psychedelic, I think, but then again, when I add the colour, you can sometimes be quite surprised by what you get, as I said earlier. Um, let's have a bit up there. Quite quick to do as well. And of course, where you've got the stitched line, it acts as a sort of an edging, so you can um, you don't go over the edge with your pencil. Um, I'm going to put a bit of pink in. I don't know why, but I fancy a bit of pink. So let's put a bit of pink in here. 
Now, obviously, you could do lots and lots of quilt blocks like this, and it wouldn't take you too long before you had quite a collection. Um, you could do all the stitching and then sit and have all the fun of colouring and playing with them. Now, I've, I think that's enough for the minute. So I kind of got to that point and thought, well, okay, I now need some water and I don't really know how much water to apply. So I just went for it and I just popped it on and just look at that. And it bled outside of my lines, which I really rather like. So then of course I stuck more water on thinking, oh, I'll encourage it to bleed outside the lines. But doesn't that look lovely? I quite was quite impressed. It's almost you're sort of diffusing the colour further afield and you've got no control over how far it spreads and certain colours spread further than others. And it's rather nice just to be so random about it. Oops, I've added a bit of pink to the yellow there. And, I, and you can actually spread it, if you want to spread it further, you can spread it just by pulling the paint across the surface. And I think that's looking really quite nice. Okay. And then you can go back in and you can add other colours. I mean, you can mix the colours, as I said earlier. Um, you can add a bit of orange to something and that will lighten that up there. And you can, you know, you can fiddle around. I'll add a bit of orange to my blue as well. don't quite know what that will do. But... So there you have it, guys. It's... Uh, it's quite nice um, to have that all bleeding outside the edge and you can see that you can get quite good results with it. So I think I should be doing a little bit more of this. I quite enjoyed myself. There you have it guys. That was a really interesting exercise and although I was only playing and experimenting, I quite like the effects and I think I might actually go for making a quilt at some point. So if you enjoyed that, don't forget to like, share and comment and subscribe to my YouTube video and I'll see you next time.